I'm ABC 10 meteorologist Carly Gomez with your latest update on Hurricane Hillary. Now approaching Cabo San Lucas as of Friday night, we're seeing a very well defined eye of that hurricane and it remains a category four hurricane. It's been a cat four since very early Friday morning, continuing to remain a four into Friday night. Winds at 130 miles per hour. Now at 129, it becomes a cat three. So we're very close for it to lose just a bit of intensity, lowering and downgrading its category status. The movement north northwest at 13 miles per hour and the pressure dropping to 948 millibars. As we continue to track this hurricane here, you can see all of that strong motion pulling in and continuing to really define that eye wall there, bringing in that moisture now and just pouring down on areas of La Paz into Cabo San Lucas tonight, as we've been seeing some videos also coming in of those areas down trees, completely toppling over as well as those very strong winds. Now, watches, warnings, advisories all issued up and down that peninsula there for Baja California, as we're seeing here in blue. That is a tropical storm warning and then the hurricane warning being issued further north where it is expected at this point to potentially make landfall and then maybe once again as it veers off into the water making a second landfall toward the border of Tijuana into San Diego. Now let's track the system tonight as we take a look at this category four hurricane again 130 mile per hour winds. We are tracking its movement toward the north northwest potentially still becoming a cat three into Saturday 6 a.m. and then downgrading into Saturday 6 p.m. as a category two hurricane. Of course, models continue to change back and forth each day and each new advisories. We get new information on the strength of this of this hurricane along with the warm waters it's in. So as we continue to see the upgrades up and down, this is really going to tell us how well this storm system is doing itself. Now starting to move into a category two, you notice that kind of peninsula that shoots out there off Baja California. This is where we may see our first landfall. If that's the case, it could begin losing some strength. If not, and it, it avoids it altogether, it may still tread over very warm water and continue heading its way up toward areas right here just south of the border as a category one. Now this is going to be telling. If it begins as a category one and loses strength almost instantly, then we could see it as a tropical storm into San Diego, making landfall into the United States and California as maybe just a tropical storm system. If it holds on, we could see our first hurricane making landfall into California as we know it to be. And take a look at this. Finally, we're starting to see and project here possibility for it to become a tropical storm. Current model showing tropical storm at landfall into areas of San Diego by around 5 p.m. on Sunday. So 5, 6 p.m. or so is really that time, that hour you need to start getting ready. By noon, I've been saying it, you should already be home, have everything you need at that point in time on Sunday around noon. Make sure you're safe, make sure you have enough sandbags if need be, and make sure you just bring everything in. Patio furniture, everything involved, bring it in, make sure it's safe so it's not getting blown around. We do expect very strong winds as it moves into San Diego could knock out your windows, cause some damage. Now, as it continues its track through Orange County and into Los Angeles County, this is where we're gonna see some heavy rain, potential for flash flooding, and a lot of wind headed that way. The sea is even starting to bring in strong waves. Now, veering toward the Northeast, we do expect that low pressure system into areas just over Yosemite, over that Sierra Crest there into Nevada. Everything impacted is going to be areas just there on the western side near Yuma and western Arizona, all the way up into areas of Vegas and most of Nevada dealing with the impacts of this. So even though it's not maybe a direct hit or you're not even in the cone, you'll see the impacts. You're starting to get some rain in your area, at least cloud coverage and some of those temperatures even dropping. All right, this is now the first ever tropical storm warning issued in California's history. The National Weather Service does have a recorded tropical storm from 1939, but the National Weather Service didn't it really exist. They weren't issuing these watches and warnings at that time. But what they were doing was they were tracking things. What we are seeing now is that that tropical storm watch that was issued earlier today has now upgraded and increased to that tropical storm warning. Waves expected to be anywhere from 8 to 13 feet with gusts as high as 65 to 75 miles per hour. And I say as high because this is mostly going to be some coastal areas 
air is directly impacted by that storm and the outer bands. Now we're going to see a lot more areas mostly dealing with about 35 to maybe 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Now this event really taking place Sunday evening into Monday morning. So it'll be about a 12 hour event. You'll be seeing that heavy rain, even areas of flooding and strong winds. Now we're also looking at a wind advisory in effect for the desert south West areas here of California and Southeast California, as well as Arizona, looking at very strong winds and they're currently starting to get the impacts of all that humidity, all of that moisture from the hurricane making its way up as of Friday night, looking at those thunderstorms pushing through as well toward Las Vegas. Okay, let's talk rain. How much? What are we looking at? Flash flooding. Yeah, there is flash flooding potential and there is some warnings being issued for that, especially for areas of Riverside, San Bernardino County, as well as Palm Springs and desert regions where the flash flooding is very prominent. Taking a look at the yellow and orange shade there, that's what we're seeing as much as three to maybe five inches of rain in Mexico. They are seeing a hurricane warning being issued along their coastline there. And then this drags its way up into areas of San Diego, making its way toward areas there into Marietta. And you can also see if you're looking at that yellow and orange shade once again, three, four inches possible. I mean, this is a lot of rain in a very short amount of time. We could expect to see flash flooding events, especially if there were burn scars. And then further north, we're going to continue to see the movement here tracking north and then eventually taking a sharp right or east their movement to the northeast. That's where it starts heading into Nevada. Now, although we may not be getting direct impacts into northern California or Central Valley spots, there's a lot of cloud coverage, a lot of moisture, maybe not dumping two to five inches, but we may see as much as a tenth to a quarter inch of rain headed in northern California. A lot more rain headed into the desert areas as well as you're looking at three to six inches possible. Now let's take a look as we start moving into your Saturday. We could see a little bit of rain for areas of the Sierra. And then finally, this is where we really see it coming in late Sunday night. Heavy rain for the high Sierra spots, areas near Yosemite, and then a lot of rain into Nevada. Cloudy skies up and down the valley all the way up to Redding. Cloud coverage moving from Sunday night into Monday morning. You see that entire system whip right back around, bringing in some rain for areas from Yuba City, Placerville to Sacramento, and then all the way up maybe to about Redding as we get to early Monday morning. So anticipate some rain still back into the forecast in the middle of August.